streets of Barnstable witness the tramp, 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 tramp of so many men. Women and children marching from the guild into one car to persuade the young men of Barnstable to do their duty. Tramp, 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 tramp. I'm on a train. I've been scribbling in this book as well as you in the countryside. That's why my scribbling's so shaky. I would not like to live up the Thames. The countryside's not looking very special. The grass is all poor and the roots are choked to death by weed. By what it looks like now, we're on the road to Liverpool. I've passed a lot of mines from my feet to here. Is that a businessman? There's lots of people. This building's a massive. Is that a German spy? Is that a coal mine? Yeah, I think so. Where are the horses? Where are all the hills? He's so flat. Come, I wouldn't want to live around here. Tram, 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 tram. And of men who have fought and are wounded. Men who have shed their blood. Many men for life. And most bitter of all, we. The children. Children of brave men. Fathers and brothers. Men who have left their nearest and dearest to fight for our freedom. Some of us dress like little soldiers, little nurses, to honour those so far away. Disembarked from our little steamships with smaller lighter at 10 a.m. and had a rough trip ashore. We were the first ever troops manned by day without being shelled. The first experience of shell fires was <coughs> afterwards. A bit nervous, but soon settled down to it. Perks showing the bay to where we are. Pretty heavy. Come on, lads! I can't wait to get over there! How many you shoot my first gun? Do you think, after all this time, we'll finally get there? Who knows it's so loud? Boy, you! Watch what you're doing! Be careful, then! Can't swim! Can't wait to get on dry land! It is not as hot as I thought it would be. Tramp, 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 tramp. In our hands, banners and placards, our brothers are calling you. Duty, duty, do it now. Come on, Baron boys, be sports. Today, say yes, I'll go. Some of us are for the fellow next to us, or the father lost, or a brother that is no more. Seek a home by silence. The roses of the summer days bloom where our soldier hero lays. The soft warm breeze around him. Led on his men with warrior's pride, and fell in winning by their side. Although his loss we may deplore, and that he sleeps on foreign shore, he is our hero evermore. Though in sound of shot and shell, we know that he will sleep as well as in a grave by woodland and dell. He gave his country all his best. It matters not where he may rest. Whatever is, is surely best. In the trenches, you feel very shut in. <coughs> you see little, except earth walls and sandbags, except when you look through a loophole. You see far to in the foreground, then short scrubs and rocks. Up on the slope, you see the Turks line, his line of parapets, about 300 to 400 yards away. After a bait, you don't even notice the smack of the bullets into the sandbags, even when they're close to your heads. It's really no worse than an exciting game. Am I on target? A little bit to the left. Yep. Oh no, it's a stretcher. Oh, oh it's gone. Right, my bad. Okay, a bit more to your left. Okay, fire. Hit. Yes! Oh, so big, Chain. Dear Fabio, did you want to stretch again to the field station? He's heavy. My mind, Fabio? Yeah, I guess. A bit to the left. No, to the right. There you go. That's nice. Can, can you hear me? Listen to what my brother writes. I much regret the slackness of recruiting in my native town. I am sure if it's a slight like me, they would don me khaki. Thank you. 
Bible time. If you have an advanced school, make up your mind. Hold your autumn suits and come and join us. Last night, we had the worst trip I've ever had in my life. It rained and rained in purple mountain ground seats. We had to get to the front line of the trenches to keep a bit of trench up. Most of the trench washed right away. We locked our way to some muddy water, and it was my luck to be in one of those places. Save me! You're heavy. Keep your wall up. I'm, I'm trying! Keep your sandbags up. The weapons are so heavy. No, not the weapons. Oh, I haven't replied to that letter yet. No, no, not my jacket, no! Lads, lads, the wires are down. Trap, 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 trap. Tra. We are the brothers, sisters and children of those who fight this war. Where are the men who are going to fight by the sides of our brothers and fathers? Say sneaking at home. Hiding behind the mummer's skirt or the skirt of another man's daughter. Wake up, young men of Devon. Face your responsibility. Come forward to help us win this terrible war. Christmas Day. I thought I'd walk up home, felt a bit homesick. Feet decided to be better. Never do I want frostbite again. I had a fair dinner of boiled beef, but no pudding. I had an orange and a bottle of lemonade, a gift from the government. I spent the evening singing carols. Whoa! I got some basketball fairings! Oh, I got some tobacco. Do you want a treat? Yeah. yeah! Wish John was here. He'd love this. A bottle of lemonade? Oh, no, Dear Father, I hate
hasten to warn you that we're on right today and most likely just rescue. I have decided to join the army, do my part in helping defend our country. So by the time you read this, I will already be well on my way to the recruitment office. Move, move, get those trenches done! I've seen Cub Scouts get past this. I am in safe hands. Shout! It'll be long and arduous. However, I'll come out the other side with a renewed sense of purpose and belonging. I'll write to you soon, without fail. All my love, George. Oh, what's he got himself into now? Oh. Are you sure? I mean, it does seem rather odd, doesn't it? Believe me, Sylvie, your dad is fine. I'm sure they'll be left sooner or later. But two weeks is an awfully long time, and, and he promised he'd write to me the moment he arrived. And much rather they got this whole affair and were done with. Just much warm on us playing chess for good men. <laughs> Lines led by donkeys. A side has to be taken, and if it were me, I'd sign up in an instant. You'd be dead on your back in an instant, too. Do you know how old Mr. Hux was faring after, you know, the whole rotten lot? No, but he certainly had his fair share of misfortune this past year. I do hope he's all right. First his wife, now his boy rang up. It's more than a poor soul like him can bear. Um, doesn't Sir think about, I'm sure young George is safe. Poor good Douglas in charge, he'll keep a close eye. And my wife's up there too, they'll tough out together. All good men. I dare say Doug will be right at home, <laughs> especially after all those bumps in India. They'll be laughing and tomfoolery all day long. Well, when they're not hiding from a hair of gunfire, I do hope young George is safe and well. He was always such a sweet boy. Yes, so do I. And for his father's sake as well. But, oh God, five and twenty past six. I must be on my way. I'll see you next Thursday, March, dear. Bye. You miss a bit of hard work. Attention! <laughs> oh, if you check see this is bad, you should try Calcutta in summer. Is that so? Good lord, yes. Couldn't get a stench of cow muck and curry fat out of the uniform for weeks. You should consider yourself honoured to have experienced such fine dining. We sat here in blood and muck that taste better than these ration packs. You always wear a sinner, Gaddams. Ark at you. I was surrounded by young whippersnappers and expected to work, run, and shoot as well as them. If you're 20 years older, you'd be the same. Well, maybe that's why you still have got a wife here, sir. Excuse me, sir, but I think there's no way to talk to your elders. Watch out, Spore, you're on big clean G tonight. Lay off, George. I don't fancy having to play cards by myself. Right! Stick with the right. Yeah, Bloody Turks, I'll let it up. Sound like a land sold in Munster Street. Isn't that where the communication branch is, oh, sir? Oh, good lord. All right, Georgie, looks like this is your first taste of the action. Get a move on this. Go, go, go! Come on, there George! There it Longingly waiting to be in your arms again. Ah, uh, 
I told you so it was quite the charmer. Does it say where they've been posted? Or Heavens no, they don't do that. If another one of those ships gets attacked, we can give away valuable information to the enemy. Put this whole long country at risk. I, I suppose you're quite right. Um, I, I really mind, but I, I left my glasses at home. I don't mind reading it for you. Thank you, but, but I'd much prefer to read it myself. I'll be on my way now. Okay. Goodbye, William. join up, George. What do you mean? <laughs> well, why'd you join up? Why here? Why, why now? Honestly? Yeah. Well, I just wanted to get away from basketball, you know, my mother died. And I wanted to do something for England. England needs people like us, people who stand up and fight for what's right. I know exactly what you mean. When I kids on my knee, ask them what I did for the Great Ball, I want to be able to say, I was fighting to keep your future safe from those kids coming off the Turks and Germans. You were part of the reason too, you know. Was I now? Of course! We always were the terrible twosome. What was the name of our fifth form teacher again? Oh, uh, you mean, oh, Miss Marshall? That's it. We had her running around in circles, all right. Now look at us, all grown up, giving those Turks hell. I don't want to die, George. Don't say that. We won't. But if I do, I want to die fighting. Where is all of this coming from, Robert? Well, you know, the other day we were <coughs> shooting over the parapet, that bloke next to me was there one minute and then he wasn't. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's certainly enough to make any man think. But we'll soon, we'll kill all the Turks and it'll be warm meals and beautiful girls for us at home. That's the stuff. My God, I think the post just went. Hand had left my father in weeks. Come on, you should have something to her as well.
strong, brave boy fighting such a noble cause. She would have been proud. If the going ever gets tough, please think of me. And all those back home who want to see your loving, boyish face again. You can't begin to understand what life would be like if you died. Your ever loving father. your previous letter. However, it was heavily censored in a typical military fashion. I feel like I'm surrounded by a great much more monkeys. I miss the company of a like-minded individual such as yourself. Apart from that, all seems to be in order. The usual suspects are playing off as normal, but I don't think I can handle it. I must go now. Do you play nice with everyone over there? Hope this is you. Dear Mr. Huxtable, it is with the very greatest of regret that I sit to write you this letter today, which will cause you such pain. Your son, George Huxtable, who was in my squadron, was killed in action which my squadron had on the 10th of November. He was one of the party sent out to protect some entanglements under fire. There was a very violent fire opened up covering the party. The Turks tried to rush the hill they were on. Your son, who was on the extreme left, was our bomber. He and Corporal Redcliffe both stuck to their ground and put up a great fight. And there is little doubt in my mind that those two saved the whole party. As you know, this is war. And war never changes, even when good men deserve better. Your son was a good man and a delight to serve with. My greatest sympathy, Lieutenant Douglas Baker. of October 1915. It was still hot then, during the day. So them flies, them blimmin' flies. Bless us, lad, I've got your letters. What have I told you about sitting in my spot? Sorry, Serge. Carter. Right here, Serge. Simmons. Thank you, Serge. First letters from home since we arrived. Hey, look, I got four. <laughs> Only one? Doesn't anybody love you, Ernie? Lay off, this is from my mum. Anything from my mum on it, Sergeant? Yes, thanks, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. Are there any letters to go home? I'm collecting your letters for home. Won't be a minute, Sergeant. That'll even shorten the farms, though. Is that right, Ernie? What's that? It will even shorten the farms. Uh, that's right, yeah. It's all cushy on the farms, isn't it? Plenty of older boys do the work. Just an excuse for the young ones not to get out here. What do you know about it? <laughs> yeah, Craig, so what do you know about working on a farm? It's for men. Glove factory, that's women's work, that is. There's a lot to kill. No muscle. 
You all right, lad? Bad news? No, sir. Why so glad? This is all from my mum, sir. There's nothing from my dad. And is that a problem? Come on then, lad. It's the last call for your left side. Thank you, Sarge. Real soon, now, lads. C careful. Looks like the tower's broken up. It's time to get back to the wall. No doubt, brown off because I'm here. It's not hard yet. Move the sandbags. Put your backs into it. It would have been November the 3rd that my letter finally reached North Dublin. Dear Father, I need you to forgive me. I have to do my duty, you must understand. I'm sure Sammy will do his best to help out on the farm. Old school might let him have time off given the circumstances. That's boring. Get to the exciting bit. Has he killed any Turks yet? Water this on his house to stop Lucy and Sammy are too young to understand. But Ernie, he's old enough, isn't he? Old enough to understand this farm can't run without him. Not since the accident. It's his choice and you have to respect that. Respect? What does he know about respect? I'm his father. And he went behind my back and let the farm go hand. Why can't you just be proud of him? I already was. But you have to sign up now. It's not the law, not yet. We'll manage somehow, we always do. How? Just how? I can help. Can you even plow? If you teach me how to plow, I can help. A woman plow and be the laughing stock in North Devon. Ha, ha, ha! Oh, that sounds disgusting. And it's not just a few flies. No. No. It's not the old blue bottle that your mother likes to chase around the kitchen with her dishcloth. We're talking thousands. Millions. Many more than you could count. A thousand months big enough to account for them all. No, Lucy. Bigger even than the very biggest number you could think of. How can there be that many flies? He must be telling stories. It will be like, like when Dad puts a dead crow on the fence to warn the others to stop eating the seed in the fields. You know how the flies down there, aren't it? So, there's lots of dead crows there then? No, Steve, they're not dead crows, dead. Dead other things. What dead other things? Come on, Lucy, stop asking questions. And Samuel, don't tell her a thing. Now give me that letter. sit down to a right royal meal of a couple of hard biscuits with a bit of apricot jam. After a day of even sandbags, catching water, working on those dugouts, yeah? Sergeant. A nice cup of chow, some lovely hard biscuits, and a side order of 
apricot jam, not forgetting the protein field, flies. <coughs> the moment the jam came out, it's thick with flies, crusted with flies, black with flies before you can get the biscuit to your mouth. They're crawling on your face, they're buzzing in your ear, they're lighting on your lips. Fresh from the unburied corpse of a British Tommy, or Johnny Turk, rotten in no man's land. I tell you, Father, I'd sooner be beside you back on the farm than in this hellhole, but I have to do my duty. Only get down! Only! Are your parents in? Uh, yes. Mum, it's for you! Uh, are you allowed to take a walk? Go back inside, Mrs. Can I speak to your husband? So sorry. He wrote one last letter. I've had enough of stupid letters. Just get out of my house. I'm so sorry. Make sure you don't Sammy. Oh, Mum, Dad. Was he a man from the war? That's not it. He's only come home. No, he's coming. He's what? dead! How? He's been shot. But we only got a letter from him last week. We saw it coming. Mommy, the truth! should die, think only this of me, that there is some corner of a foreign field, that is forever England, there shall be in that rich earth a richer dust concealed, a dust whom England bore, shaped, made aware, gave once her flowers to love, her ways to roam, 
a body of England, breathing English air, washed by the rivers, blessed by sons of home. You and me, we were like brothers. We grew up together. And you're never fooled by the positivity of war. But I was. I should have looked out for you. You better get this body out of here. The flies are already beginning to swarm. Shooting, murder, flies. It's the same old, same old. Dear Maria. Dear mother and father. Dear mother. Dear mum and dad.
my dearest Maria. It's been too long since we've written. There are rumours that the ship carrying our post has been torpedoed, but don't worry, I'm safe. Not a day goes by when I don't think of you. Well, the tea for that fact. Stuff here is far too weak. You'll be glad to know that we're sticking it to the Ottomans and doing you all proud back home in England. How is everyone? How are David and his son? Give everyone my love. Your ever loving Edward. Wake up, everyone! Wake up! Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Get to work. Boys, just get digging. Dear mother and father, it has been two long weeks since I last saw you. Soldiers are dropping like flies up the mainland. Talking of flies, oh, they've made my life a living hell. I'll be free, though. I'll be all right. Don't you worry. Officer! Please take my letter. Yes, sir. The food isn't great. It consists of cheese and crackers. But I'll be all right. And I hope everything's going good at home. I'll go to post it now. Thank you. Dear Mother, thank you for your last letter. We had to sing a trench yesterday. Got it done in two hours, did as you always taught me, hard work. Dysentery is going around the camp at the moment. Soldiers are dropping like flies. Only the other day, little Tommy from school. You remember little Tommy, don't you? He died from it. Drunk dodgy water, that's a gossip around camp anyway. Get Sarah to write next time. And that. P.S. John said he's too tired to write. But don't you worry, I'll keep my little brother safe. Fred, give that back, we can share. You weren't planning on sharing it with any of us. now. I'm the only one left. Exmoor, winter, 1914. Master, Devon and Somerset, Staghounds. Major Grey leads the hunt.
Oh, you don't want to sign up, Father. You're out of your mind. I well, wanted to do a for my country. Well, you're under it. They wouldn't know if I'm 17, 18, or even 20. What if I told them? I didn't dare. I would. You wouldn't. Well, I'm signing up and you're not. I'm going to. Next! <laughs> Name? Danny? Age? 21. On you go. Name? Oi! What? What are you doing here? I want to just survive my country. I'm going to go well, to war. I don't want you to die. I don't want you to die either, but I will have to do what's right. Well, no! Go home! Name? Uh, Bill? Age? 17. Sorry, 18. Bye bye! Name? Doug Gray. Position? Major. Sorry, Major Gray. Name? Uh, Peter Wilson. Age? 18. On you go. Name? Uh, Bill? Age? 18. On you go. <laughs> Oi, you! Get back here. Name? Uh, Kevin. Age? 18. On you go. Good luck in Gallipoli. My name's already Bill. I'm not 18 either. I'm only 16. I had to join. Parents back home, you see. He hit her. He hit her. She told me my only option was to leave. So I went. Oi, pick up the pens. Another black day for us. Peter Wilson. I mean, what kind of name is that? You see, my father, he's a major, but he's still my dad, and he just doesn't want me getting hurt. I don't know why I started, signed up for this stupid war in the first place. I've lost most of my friends out here. I've lost my dad and my brother. I went to a commune at 7.30am. It was a hell in the road by our camp. We met our chat with picks and shovels going to dig the trenches. Come on, you lot, time to dig some trenches. Hurry up, the trench is not going to dig themselves. Get over there now. One shell dropped from just behind her, all the men just getting ready for firing. That girl was about 400 yards away from us. It served them right. Bang! Bang! Dear everyone, I have received your letter and I am well. Many men have been killed and many more are injured, but I'm okay. The water supply is terrible and the hygiene is poor. But I'll survive. I hope to see you soon. Yours sincerely, Stephen. Come on, lad, grab the gun, grab the gun! I was about three paces away from Major Gregg. Major Gregg, myself, and where the shell burst from the triangle. The shell passed through Major Gregg's in face and neck before he struck to the ground. Dear Mother, my father was here. Those of you who have shot guns have been attacked. And my mother, I'll do round with some dysentery and a fresh boost. This is covered in feet. Major Gregg has been shot. Father! That was that, the Gallipoli campaign. We thought it was going to be easy. Well, weren't we wrong? Back in Devon, we used to be so happy and jolly. We can't forget Snatch of Steve. Oh, he just takes what he wants. Just takes. Come on, one lucky day Oh, come on! Look at him by yourself. He's just scared. Yeah. I'm not 
scared. I'm not scared. I will go. Prove it, I will go. Yeah, that's right. I didn't want to go to the war. I felt the need. I did it for my country. And I'm proud of what we did for the war. Am I scared? Of course I'm scared. I'm not stupid. I can't let them know that though. Because if I let them know that, I have to. I won't. I had to go. I just couldn't let them know. Me, scared. <laughs> Never think of it. I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna fight, I'm gonna do my bit. I'm gonna do my bit for my country. I've made friends here. Most of them dead now. Soon I'll be home, back in Devon. Soon. This was the Gallipoli War. Me and my brother and I played war in the garden. I got you. No, no you didn't. Yes, I did. Got you that time, didn't I? Later did we soon know it would become reality. Next! I can't believe that we're finally doing this. Ever since we were children, me and my brother used to play soldiers in the garden. And to think that we've gone from playing in the garden to actually signing up to be a soldier, well, it's incredible. Well, there is one problem though. I'm worried that one of us, or maybe, maybe both of us, might not come back. But I can't stop now. I must do this for my little brother. Next! So, where do you think we'll be going then? What do you think we'll be doing? Well, fighting, of course. Like we practiced all our lives in the garden? Yeah, yeah, something like that, I guess. Sign here. Uh, can we sign up together? Joined at the hip, are we? See what I can do. September 26th, Liverpool, the boat to Gallipoli. That there is Private Tozer. He was fearful and never much help. That there is Private Stribbles. He was a quiet soul. That there is my brother. I always looked up to him, and now I was following him into war. And that young lad there is me. I remember feeling excited but fearful of what lay before us. That's Private Evans. He was very seasick and was dreading the journey to Gallipoli. <coughs> I hate boats. What? How long have we been? This is horrible. I want to die. When are you done any fighting yet? <coughs> I hate this. This couldn't get any worse. <coughs> but it did. Gallipoli. Not a lot of water. Not a lot of fighting. Not a lot of food. Not a lot of anything really. Until it rained. And it rained. And it poured. And it rained some more. And it poured some more. My feet are soaking. My legs are soaking. This water's up to my waist. My hands are drenched. <coughs> Help me keep these sandbags in place. I'm trying, but I'm slipping. This could not get any worse. <coughs> November 28th. What's that? It's snow. But it's only November. It's just a flurry. It'll pass. It's not passing. It's getting worse. <coughs> it's like a blizzard. It's getting yeah. cold. Like 1908, when snow covered the barns. Yeah, uh, but at least back then we were nice and warm, around a nice fire. I want to be back home with mum and dad around the fire now. Me too, bro. Let's go, keep moving. Oh, come please. on, mate, just keep going. I can't, I need to stop. Please, my feet. Come no, on, keep going. Keep going. Keep moving. So come on. We can't leave this. Just go on, we need to keep going. <sighs> I'll keep watch. No. Back. Give me help. Oh. Oh. Where is it? Oh. <coughs> 
like that, they were gone. Only two of us would return home. December 15th, 1915. By the time you get this, we will have left this wretched peninsula. I say we, but there's now very few of us. Of the 502 men that arrived on October 8th, there are now a mere hundred or so still here. Although we lost relatively few men to guns or bombs, Many have already left because of dysentery and frostbite. Those that remain are a hardened bunch, and hardy too. Anything that isn't nailed down has been taken off the, to the ships already. What is still here, and it isn't much, the men are determined the Turks won't be able to use. They're laying booby traps and bombs. You'd be amazed at how ingenious they're being. I can't say I approve, as we still have a job to do to prove to the Turks that we're not leaving. Men are told off to continue digging trenches and taking pot shots even the occasional shrapnel bomb, or to give the illusion that we're planning more offensives. Though, to me, it does seem like an awful waste of energy, and explosives. Still, if it prevents the Turks from taking advantage of our departure, and saves more lives, then so be it. We're awaiting the order to pull out. It can't come soon enough for me, or the men. What are you men doing? Sir! Well? Um, we're, um... Time to your butt yet, Cap. I asked you a question. It must be any time now. Answer the question. It's a booby trap, sir. You can see that. That's not what we've been asked to do, is it? No, sir. No, it isn't. Sir, we've been here two and a half months and we've gained nothing. Dead, wounded, dysentery, frostbite, and we've gained nothing. We just want the Turks to know that. Well, sir, we were here. You want to kill them with booby traps because you think we failed? No, sir. We it doesn't seem to me to be a fair way to fight. What about Yendel? Are you questioning me, trooper? No, sir. Get back to work. Continue digging as normal. Yes, sir. Move. Yes, sir. We're off. Where to, Sarge? If I told you that, it wouldn't be a surprise, now would it? Yendo, look down the field. Horses. Men? Men not horses. They're ponies. Barge ponies, I reckon. Hark at him, he knows his horses. I told you, they're not horses. Yes, yes. yes. Ponies. ponies. They're, they're ponies. ponies. You can take the boy from the farm, but you can't take the farm from the boy. <laughs> what were you doing in the army, Yendel? Yendel! Yendel! Where are you? We'll be late for the parade. I'm just feeding the horses. You and those beasts. They're not coming with us, you know. I know, I know. You're not crying, are you? Of course not. I've got some straw in my eyes all. Good thing is, they'll be safer here than in the war. <laughs> I know, I know. Daft, if you ask me. How could we be hussars but not have horses? See, you don't need horses where they're fending us. What place doesn't have horses? Unless it's a desert. They're getting me on their camel. Oh, come on, Yendo, where's your spirit of adventure? Sand. Blooming sand. Everywhere. It's in my boots, it's in my hair, and it's even in my underwear. <laughs> At least we were training in Egypt. We got a bath at the end of the day. There's a sea down there. What are you complaining about? Oh, for a nice hot bath. Your mother would be amazed to hear you say that. I used to have a bath. Yeah, once a year. Once a week. What's wrong with the sea anyway? You can't get a good lather of soap in that salty water. And it makes your hair stick up. Who fancies you anyway? And we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, men. We need to haul the water off the boats up to the reserve trenches. If we'd have brought the horses, they could have done that for us. Don't be daft, man. Them horses would never go up them rocky path. Look at the mules. The Union Regiment are using. <sighs> mules, nasty creatures. Give me a horse any day. Sorry, Endor, but all the horses are back at the training base in Clankton. Come on, men. Let's get at it. There's a Turkish sniper down the trench there. Look out. Fierce but fair. That's the Turks. Good work out there, Endor. How are your knees? <sighs> Not bad, Sarge. Come on, Yendo. My turn on the first step. It's quiet today, isn't it? Yeah, so far it is. I'm lucky you. You're in entanglement tonight. Oh, I hate going through that scrubland. I just don't get it. They're trying to shoot us at any moment they possibly can. It just seems too quiet. Yeah. Just have word the Turks are holding fire while we're moving everyone onto the hospital ships. Uh, I reckon it's the safest place to be around here, the hospital ships. They won't fire on it. 
I don't get it. They're trying to shoot us at any other possible time. They can. Soldier? Yes, sir. Put your hand down, Yendel, old friend. <sighs> we haven't been able to have a heart to heart since you've been here. I've been a bit busy, I'm afraid. I'm doing just as well as the other men. What about you, Yendel? You haven't seemed your normal self. I'm okay. I'm just missing the horses, that's all. Come on, Yendel. I've known you long enough now to know when you're lying. There's more to it than horses. You can tell me. It's just... I've just had my baby girl and... I've left Sarah all alone with her. And with my ill mother. I just... I have to go back. I can't leave them on their own. I can't leave them on their own. Listen to me, Yendel. You and I are getting out of here with victory in our hearts and nothing less. Do you, do you promise? Yeah, I, I promise. Here, Sarge, there's a wounded mule on top of that hill. Turk's got a shot at it. Doesn't look too bad. Just needs water carriers taken off so the move can, move, men can move the beast. You need help, Sarge? Yeah, no, you know about horses, don't you? <sighs> yes, Sarge. But not about mules, though. Go give them a helping hand, lad, on the way down to the dugout. Yes, sir. Don't like mules. No creature deserves to die like this. Oh, Yandel, poor lad. And you were only trying to help. Stop, stop! Rabbit, get hold of the harness. No, let it go. What's going on? It's Yandel. What's he doing out there? It's stuck in the entanglements, in the wire. He's a sitting duck. Get down, Yandel, leave the beast. He can't, sir. You know, Yandel, he won't. He's trying to feed a mule, sir. Hit the fuck up, get him! Easy target. This is for you, Yandel. Whatever other skills we lacked, organising the evacuation was not one of them. Not then, nor many years later. Red Indians had nothing on us regarding silent getaways. I've got frostbite, but you know what? If I can get off this peninsula by tonight, I will. Blimey! Ow! Shh! Sort of chaps! Oh! Ah! It's my back. I'm a stretch bear. Lifted you a heavy, really heavy lad last week, but no need to worry. I'll be alright as soon as I get on that boat. Just keep quiet. No noises. All sudden movements. See that store dump over there? Those oil drums. Can you make them out in the moonlight? Wired together with explosives. We did that. Yeah. Johnny Turkey's gonna get a big surprise when that lot goes up. Let's just hope they don't go up whilst we're going past them. Look down there. The boats. Well spotted, Trooper. Time to move down the beach, sir. Machine guns dismantled? Yes, sir. Signalised disconnected? Yes, sir. Bags and rifles? Yes, yes sir. sir. Let's go. Goodbye, lads. Who are you saying goodbye to? The ones who aren't coming back with us. Ernan Simmons, 25th November, 1915. John Smith, 2nd of July, 1915. Wallace Ewings, 2nd of December, 1915. 4th of November, 1915. <laughs> Come on, lads, get that haystack. Fred, stop daydreaming and start sweating. I hear that George Dallin has got a steam machine for bailing hay. I and he's been spent most of his time trying to get that thing to work. I hear he can't even get it out the hill. Fat lot of good. That'll be your Devon farmland. All you need for Devon farmland, a couple of strong lads, a couple of horses, and a few pints of cider. <laughs> They'll be wanting our horses after the war effort, I hear. They'll be wanting us boys next. <laughs> well, they ain't getting my cider. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Looks like they're sending out another plane out to war. It's a bit low, isn't it? It's not going to make the trees. Keep moving. Moon's coming out, sir. Down! Ow! Shh! My back! First lot of timers should be going off. Maybe the wires got wet. No. We need the explosions to distract the Turks. I'll go back and check. There's no time. No, but I laid them. I'll go. You caught anything yet? Reg, this is madness. If they catch us fishing here, we'll be done for. Keeper won't come now, not on a night like tonight. Listen to that wind howling. Reckon we've got five minutes at most. 
Then we better go. You scared, Bert? Not the keeper of my mother. If I get in trouble again, the fierce old Besom. Keeper can't catch us. He's far too slow nowadays. Huh, but his dogs ain't. I'll get over that fence before you count to 20. <laughs> You're not as quick as you think, boy. What's that? Dynamite. Quickest way to catch those salmon. You're mad, boy. I hear I should down with Bishop Taunton. Not with this wind, Harley. Ready? Go! Yeah, he did it. Good man, Reggie. Now form a, form a line slowly and wait out until you see the lighters. Be careful. Remember, they're metal. So climb on board as quietly as you can. We have metal toe caps on our boot. How are we going to do that? Do the best you can, soldier. I don't Come. think I'll be able to climb aboard. My back! Come on, we aren't leaving anyone behind. I don't know. Reckon I can manage this trip this Christmas dinner. Christmas dinner? I'll be alright to climb on board. It's alright. Right, that seems like everyone. What about Reggie, sir? He ain't back yet. Come on, the ship's waiting. But you said... Private! Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Wait! Wait for me! Wait! I can't swim! Run, Reggie! Come on! Imagine the gamekeeper's after you! Come on, the ship's waiting. Goodbye, Gallipoli. We won't miss it. We won't miss you. No, but I promise to come back, and when I do, I'll give you all the proper burial you deserve. Sisters, I need a nice fresh new pair of socks. <laughs> Hang handkerchiefs. Hang you can't eat handkerchiefs. Where's the blimmin' chocolate? Hey, mother, how is she? Yeah, lad, I'll find back to you. I'm decent. I don't want this. Yeah, lad, I'm in this parcel. I can't. It's not mine. Well, nobody's claimed it. I don't think they'll come back from the dead to claim it. So just out of it. But. Sergeant Luce scores. Six of us living on soldier's wage? What can we afford? Yeah, love. King's Watch. Ten shillings and a sixpence. Ten shillings and a sixpence? No, that's far too expensive. That's almost half a week's wage. No. Cadbury's dairy milk. Now that's what he wants. He's always had a sweet too. That's what he'll like. Khaki jumpers, khaki gloves, Samuel Dornoke, basketball. A uh, price, no doubt. No, I knitted him some pink fluffy socks. Hope you don't mind the colour, I mean it's all I could get, but last Saturday he sent home complaining his feet were cold, so should be alright. Did you say cold blood? Yeah, um, oh, Christmas set. Keeps you warm right up, all for the family. There's always had a bit of an alcohol excited to him, but I'm sure that he'll have to wait until he gets home for that. I cannot wait for this blooming war. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah, we're doing it for our country. Yeah, but still, imagine all those guns, those explosions. Oh, those tanks and those trenches. I heard they're eight foot deep. Yeah, there's cost our country a lot of money and they're six foot deep, by the way. Yeah, but still, imagine all these bullets flying past your head while you're running for the trenches. If you think about it, it's a little bit like rugby. I know all my mates, and especially me, we can all dodge a ball. And yeah. attack her easily. Yeah, but some of those bullets are going to hit home, you realise that, right? Yeah, but still, it'll, it'll be still really fun. Hey, you're right, lads. Oh, you're right, chap. Right. Hey, you guys signed up yet? Uh, yeah, we just did. Yeah, yeah I'm about to go now. Aren't you a little young? No. Uh, you don't look old enough, chap. Oh, well, I am, alright? Sorry, right. right now. Alright, all right. see you later, chap. Sergeant, I really can't take this. What? Are you still breathing over her? Bloody package! It's not mine! It's yours now, he's dead anyway! You still the king and country! So did you, so why can't you take I it? I don't care, it's Lad, not mine! Keep it down! I guess it's mine then! 
Oh, I have right a bloody heart to back off and stand on his cards. What's all this about? Dear brother, I wish you had it here on the farm. Them and cows have been annoying me all year. Maybe next year, eh? Dear my handsome husband, raising all these kids by myself has been horrible, but I'm coping. I can't wait to hold you in my arms. Love from your wife, Sally. Dear father, you wouldn't believe what I can do on my bike right now. You wouldn't believe it. I don't need your help anymore at all. I can't wait to show you when you get back. From your loving son, Patrick. My God. He had a son. He had a brother. He had a wife. Merry, Merry Christmas, Luke Small.
that batter and the cleaner 